Okay, guys, so we're going to get back at it. Um, so it's really funny. Remember I told you I was going to have to look to figure out how to do the, the yeah, the whole thing, right? The piece of the PDF that I had give, given you. It's got all the instructions sitting right on it, big as life. So there was nothing really to figure out. I just had to read the PDF I built to give you. So at any rate, these are the instructions that are right here. It's saying, enter the city right here. So just follow these instructions. So again, click on this to go to the website. Click on the location that you want to do here. So we'll put in Chicago. Um, also type in the name here, because this is the name that they'll use to target, um, uh, to label your map for what it is. Click on the little magnifying glass. It will actually do the search part for you. So that's actually, it's been found now. So then you need to put in the date. So you don't have to only do these. So for instance, this is set up to do tomorrow, which is the 30th, starting at 2.44. I mean, that's when it's going to actually, the whole thing is, is going to begin for us tomorrow. However, you could set this date six months from now. You could set it a year from now. You could set it two years from now. You can map these things out for uh, any time. It doesn't really matter. This will generate it for any time. So at any rate, then click on the execute button and it will go through and it will do its little thing. And I'm going to come back to this thing in just one second. But I'm going to continue to go down here. And what we're looking for to go down here is this. Typically, when you come down, you will see this. I'm going to change this so that it looks like what you'll typically see. When you scroll all the way down to the bottom of this, you will get this little chart right down here. And what you can see in this little chart, it's giving you three different things. Um, again, the location is a little obtuse, so that's why it uh, helps to have those things labeled. But it will give you the hour of the day, which is running right through here. It does it on a 24-hour clock. So again, when 19 o'clock right here is really 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so it's doing it on a 24 hour, uh, 24, using a 24 hour clock. Um, it's also giving you elevation and azimuth. And I'm going to explain what all of these guys are because all of these are incredibly important to you. Um, actually in order. Personally, I think the elevation part is the most important part. But the azimuth will also help and I'll explain what these guys are. However, doing this in 60 minute, 60 minute intervals is not precise enough. You need to change this. I'm going to change this drop down menu to doing it every 15 minutes. You don't need to do it more than that. Your table will be too long. It'll be too unwieldy. You don't want to do that part. And then simply click on execute. It will rebuild the table. I wish it didn't scroll up to the top of the window again. It does. But now you can see that these are now done in 15 minute intervals. So it starts at 7 o'clock in the morning. Well, actually it starts at 6.48 in the morning and then it goes to 7, 7.15, 7.30, 7.45. And it keeps going all the way through until 20.47, which is basically 8.47 uh, in the evening. So this is the chart that we're actually looking for. When you get this, you can click on Download Excel Table and it'll flip open a thing and ask you what you want to save this. Again, these numbers at the end here are really precise um, uh, uh, geographic locations. Um, if you know what those things mean, good for you. I don't. So I am going to just type in uh, Chicago uh, 2019 because it was set up to do tomorrow. So it's a sun path uh, daily for Chicago for this date. And then, then I'm going to simply save that Excel spreadsheet. So then I'm going to go find that spreadsheet and it's sitting right here. And I'm going to open this in Excel. Um, you would not have to, if you don't have Excel and you can't open that part, don't worry. <clears throat> you could always simply do a screenshot of the table as it is right here. You could just do a screenshot of this or probably a couple of screenshots of this. Um, you might even be able to copy the entire, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know about, I would do some screenshots of it and then you'll still have the same information. Or 
you can just save this uh, again to refer to. So this is what we care about in doing this. So I'm going to go back to Excel. So this is the thing that we just built. And this is, I'm now going to explain to you what this thing actually means. So let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. So what this is telling us right here, I've got to turn on some light here so you can see both of these. Can you guys see this uh, whiteboard at all, sort of? Can I draw on this? Are we good on this? No, you guys are good. You're not good anymore. Can you see that line? We need to turn on the lights. We good? Okay. So um, this is uh, uh, this is our ground. Here's a figure. Uh, standing on the ground. Does that make sense what's going on? Okay, so the sun rises here. So here's the sun. And the sun is rising like this. And then the sun basically does this. It goes up overhead. And then it comes down on the other side. And then this is sunset down here. Does that make sense? And then when the sun actually continues, because it doesn't stop there, if it continues around like this, by the time the sun is down here, it's nighttime for us. It's dropped below the horizon. Does that make sense what's going on here? So in very, very crude terms, the horizon to horizon basically is half of a circle. It's this half of a circle right here. Make sense? Sunrise starts at zero degrees, and it actually sets at zero degrees. This is the 90 degree mark right up here. Does that make sense? Again, 180 degrees in a circle. 0 to 90, 90 back down to 0, rising and setting, right? And then the same thing happens on the other side of the world, we just don't see it. We go on that, and it's a complete 180 degrees. Is everybody good on this part? So, with that in mind, If we were on the equator on June 21st at noon, that's the light that actually be hitting this person. The sun would be directly overhead. Probably not very flattering, wouldn't you guys agree? Right? So as the sun, if we imagine that this is where it's at, as the sun begins to start to come down, again you start to see the shadows on her begin to open up. The lighting starts to get more flattering, more flattering, more flattering, more flattering, more flattering. And then by the time we get down to here, this really becomes golden hour. You've got a pretty direct sunlight that's actually hitting her, depending on where we would shoot. So for instance, if uh, uh, you guys over here, over there, were shooting, she'd be side lit. But if we were shooting straight on with the sun actually behind us, whatever, be a very, very flat light, very pretty warm light, right? As the sun continues to go down, can this happen? No, this does not happen. Why doesn't this happen? because the sun has dropped below the horizon. So you never see available light under lighting. That's why you use available light under lighting to sort of subliminally give the idea that it is artificial light. It's how we create light for nighttime, for what would seem to be nighttime, because you never see this in the daytime. If the sun is up or anywhere up like this, whatever, you don't get this. You never get this part. That can only happen with artificial light. Does that part make sense? So you can see, we go from a place where it's really pretty ugly to a place where it's actually getting more attractive, to a place where it's actually really attractive, to a place where it's gone again. Does that sort of make sense? That is what elevation is all about. And that's what these numbers are right here. This set of numbers that are right here under elevation. So you can see that what's happening at 7 o'clock in the morning the sun has just broken the surface of the horizon. It's at 1.2 degrees and it's beginning to come up. By the time we get to 7.30, we were almost at 7 degrees up. If we continue to look through our day, the sun is continuing to get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. 
by the time we get up to 1.30 in the afternoon, I take that back, 1.45 in the afternoon is when it hits its uh, peak. It's when it hits its apex. It's actually at its highest, uh, at its highest setting for tomorrow. Then it starts to go back down again because, again, it's going back down to set. And then finally it goes all the way back down to this 2.3. And then at uh, 8.30, some between, sometime between 8.30 and 8.45, well, basically they're saying roughly around 8.45, whatever the sun has set. Does that make sense to everyone? So here's the trick. If you go back and look at the uh, uh, PDF that I've given you, these are the values you need to keep in mind. From zero degrees to seven degrees, it is too early or too late to shoot. You do have sun on the horizon, but you have lost so much light. Yeah, with a digital camera today cranked up to an ISO of 64,000, you can get a picture. But again, the sun is simply too weak to truly work with. From seven degrees to 30 degrees, it's actually possible to shoot direct. This is what we would call the golden hour. From 30 degrees to 65 degrees, you have to shoot backlit. The sun has gotten too high. You can't actually shoot it. The sun is too high. You're going to get those shadows on the overhead part. So you need to move to a backlit situation. And then finally, if you do get into a situation it's 65 to 90 degrees, you need to move to open shade because the sun is not going to be in a position. You're not going to be able to. It's so on top of a figure that you don't really have a backlight situation. You don't have a, there's no way to turn a figure when the sun gets that high that you can keep those direct shadows off of a face. Does that sort of make sense to everyone? So if we look at our chart here, what I just said was, and you guys can read this out to me. Uh, actually, then, do me a favor, will you? Just can you write this on the board for me really quick? Just grab this. So, when I look at this, I know that my first shot that I am going to do cannot happen before 7.30. I need 7 degrees of elevation. So, I'm going to go for 7.30, although this is uh, a little bit, I'm, I'm pushing things a little bit. Uh, certainly by 7.45, I'm well within that range, so I'm good to go here. So I'm going to start at 7.30. So could you put down 7.30, uh, and we're going to do direct light. So this is, it, yeah, do a 7.32, and then again, I set to 30 degrees. So right up here to 9.30, 7.30 to 9.30 is golden hour for me. I can shoot direct light. <laughs> then from 9.30... The sun at this time of the year never gets high enough that I can't shoot because I can go up to 65 degrees. But when you do one of these charts in Chicago for the summertime, the sun goes much higher in the summer. It's much lower in the winter. Winter is actually much easier to shoot available light in because in the northern hemisphere, it's harder in the southern hemisphere. It flips. So, um, again, because the sun gets much, much higher in the summertime than it does in the wintertime here. So these numbers will change, and you will actually get those times will be impossible for you to shoot. You've got to move to open shade. But in our case here, we never actually get to that point. We get close, but we never get to that point. So I can continue to 30 degrees on the other side. So from 9.30 in the morning until 5 o'clock, so 9.30 to 5 o'clock, the second setting right there, 9.30 to 5 o'clock. I can shoot backlit with a reflector. And then from 5 o'clock uh, 5 o'clock until um, 8 o'clock I can shoot. It's golden hour for me again. And you know. And there's no guesswork. So You've got an art director that says, I want to do golden hour pictures with Lake Michigan as my background. When do you shoot? You've got all the information you need. Well, where's my camera have to be if I have Lake Michigan in the background? Doesn't it need to be facing east? Right? So can I shoot golden hour sh shooting straight into the sun for sunrise? No. I've got to shoot the golden hour that happens in the afternoon. Right? The sun's going to be setting in the west. I can shoot golden hour, direct light into my figure. Lake Michigan is my backdrop. Does that make sense? 
And what time can I do golden hour? When can I start shooting? Five o'clock, and how long do I have to get it? Yeah, so that whole golden hour thing is a little misleading. It's more like golden three hours, but it depends. Is this making sense to you guys? So then, that's ex elevation, and elevation becomes critical to us because it tells you exactly when you can shoot, what kind of lighting situations, what you can be in. So, for the sports people, not that you get to pick when you can do it, but you get really famous and Nike hires you and they want to do pictures of athletes running and jumping and pole vaulting and doing all of that kind of stuff. And you say to yourself, wow, you know, to really stop that action, I would really love golden hour. I would really love that lighting, golden hour part, whatever, because I get direct light. That gives me a lot of power. I've got a lot of stopping action. I can, I can shoot at 2,000 or four. What do you typically shoot at shutter speed? Just curious. Yeah, I was going to say, rule of thumb for me, uh, shooting in the street, um, 500th of a second is a minimum to stop somebody walking. A thousandth is better if they're going to actually be doing anything. Uh, two thousandth is even better still. That, that, that's a sweet place to be. Um, so at any rate, again, I know exactly when I'm going to, okay, when do you want to book the model? Well, hopefully they're an early riser or they're into working, you know, what? I mean, you know, you just know exactly when this can all happen. Does that sort of make sense to you guys? So it's a way to plan your day out. The next thing, and this is a little less intuitive, but it still works, are the azimuth figures right here. And what the azimuth figures tell you is where the sun is relative to a uh, compass face. So what these figures are, are they're described as azimuth is always quoted as east of north. So what they do is, the way this works, is if you imagine a compass on the ground, it's a circle, and if this is north right here, this would be east, this would be south, this would be west, they said north at zero degrees by definition. Does that make sense? That makes east 90 degrees, that makes south 180 degrees, that makes west 270 degrees, uh, and then you're back to either 360 or north. Does that make sense what's going on? So the numbers that you're getting in azimuth right here are numbers that are degrees east of north. So you start in this direction. Sunrise is happening at 70 degrees east of north. Well, this is 90 degrees right here. 70 degrees is going to be right about here. This is sunrise. At its apex, which was, we said, at 130, 145, it's at 178 degrees. It's almost due south. This is now 130 uh, right here. This is uh, sunrise, which is basically 730, we said, I think. No, 7 o'clock. Too early to shoot. And then finally, we can figure out where the sun sets in the west. Why does that matter to you? I want to shoot pictures in Grant Park. Do the buildings on the south of Grant Park matter to me? You better believe they matter to me, because they can kill my sunlight. If I've got to shoot the skate park, which is right at the south, south point, right over here on the south part of that, all those big fucking buildings that they're building on the south side, the south part of the park, whatever, are going to throw shadow on that skate park for a good part of my day. When? Well, I can go out there, stand in the skate park. Do you guys have a compass? Everybody has a compass. You have one on your phone. You go to the skate park, you type in compass, you look and you see what degree south of north this is, and you say, oh, okay, the sun is going to be right behind that building from 10.30 in the morning till 12.30 in the afternoon, whatever, and you can plot it out exactly. And if you don't think every professional photographer location person in the world is not doing this, you're out of your fucking mind. They do copious versions of these charts. So they know exactly when they need to be where to get the light that they want to. Because you don't have the luxury of moving the sun. So you actually have to deal with where it's going to be and you need to know. And this is, you can plot this out a year in advance. Does this make sense to you guys? Yeah. It's incredibly important. The, um, again, if you're shooting out in, if you're, if you're like uh, on a beach 
or you're shooting in the mountains, or you're shooting in, you know, where you don't really have tall buildings and that kind of stuff, whatever, then elevation really becomes the driver in all of this. You just want to know when I can shoot front lit or back lit, and that's basically all you really care about. But when you're shooting in the city, this building thing becomes major. To help you visualize what that looks like even a little bit better, if we go back to the website that we were just looking at, it's all sitting right here. This is what it ends up being. So if you look at the little chart up here, the 4th, uh, the 30th of uh, April 2009 is this uh, sort of yellowish, orangey-ish color. It's this thing right here. This is north, and this is it right here, and this is the track that it actually goes, and you can see where it travels. It even sets times for you, and then this is where it sets. If you really want to know what's going on, you can actually... Well, I'll just tell you. If you can get the fucking map to work, if, you had, if I hadn't screwed up its size to begin with, it does an overlay on the top of it for the city of Chicago, and you can spot exactly where the sun is traced in the whole city of Chicago. Actually, let's just do this. Let's see if we can just re... Come on. Well, anyway, you can see the path of the sun right here. This is it. So you can plot. You know exactly when you're going to get into that trouble shooting at the beach part right here and when, oh, it is going to open up. That'll be right down Roosevelt Avenue or Roosevelt Road uh, at this time of the day, whatever. Is this making sense to you guys? It's, this is a game changer. It really is. It will elevate your, your outdoor photography to a whole new level. Are there questions about this? Okay, so the parts of the assignment that remain is I need you to do one of these, and you can pick it for Chicago. You can pick it for anywhere you want. Just make sure that it's labeled so I know what it is. Uh, and I also need you to run a weather chart for that same, whatever the day is that you're going to actually do this for. Make sense to everyone? So that part is still due. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording now because we've gotten through about uh, everything that, we're gonna be able to, that you're going to be able to hear.